I'm Chad. I'm Dad. No, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be Dad first. Oh yeah. You're Dad. I'm Dad. I'm Chad. And this is our channel. contracted out with Pacific Coast Avionics to do our panel build out and our wiring. Basically, we'll send the, the panel, starter switch, the vents, the ignition indicator lights, the ignition output connector wiring kit, and a few other little odds and ends over to them in Oregon. And they will wire everything up and send it back to us working. They will go in and program a lot of things, everything that they can, make sure, like I said, make sure everything works. And you know, they're doing all this, they're CAD cutting the panel out, using CAD program, cutting it out either a water jet or la uh, laser, I'm not sure which one they're using. So all that will be perfect, and then it will be powder coated. And then uh, we're using two GDU 460s, the Garmin G3Xs, so we'll have two of those guys in here. The G5 will be in the center, a backup, and then the GMC 507 autopilot will be underneath that G5, and then our rocker switches will be underneath the GMC 507. Now we're using a vertical power unit, which is a solid state box, that eliminates your breaker, your manual breakers. So we won't have any breakers. I think there's a, a 60 amp breaker. I know there's a, a 60 amp breaker. Let me find that on here because the vertical power does not, yeah, 60 amp circuit breaker. I think that's just an overall breaker coming in from the alternator. I think that's what that, that's for, but oh man, there's so much on here I'm trying to go over it with you guys. We're going to have them cut out for a second GDU 460. We're going to start out with a iPad and then USB over some of the things. We're not sure if it's going to do everything that we want to do, and that's why if it doesn't, this will already be cut out. The wiring will be behind it where we can just unscrew the, the blank and put the, the second GDU 460 in. Uh, those are like 3,900 bucks. So we decided we were we we're gonna go this this route first with the iPad. If that doesn't work for us, then we will go ahead and, and buy a second GDU 460. There's certain things that it will US uh, not USB, but it will Bluetooth over to the iPad, and not everything. But I think the synthetic vision is is sent over, and then the weather maps are sent over, but none of the engine parameters or maybe the altitude, you know, the six pack and all that, but I'm not exactly sure. So anyway, so we're, we're just ordering one of those right now. G3X, like I told you earlier, the connector kit, the GSU 25 connector kit, the GMU 11 install kit, the GDU 460 install kit. From what I understand, you don't need a second. There, there's an interface module. You, you don't need that. I think you can run up to three GDU 460s with one interface module. So basically it will just tie in. Like I said, there'll be wiring behind here. We'll be able to just plug it in and, and uh, bolt it up. It'll save a lot of time. Uh, like I said, we want to add that GDU 460, second GDU 460. It comes with the GEA24 interface. I was talking about 600 bucks. It comes with the GEA24 connector kit. Uh, the G3X Lycoming Continental four cylinder kit. That's all the sensors that go onto the engine. That, EGTs, the cylinder head temps, all that stuff. That's a thousand bucks. Fuel pressure sender, 200 bucks. The servos for the autopilot, two of those, those are 750 a piece. The GSA 28 connector kit, the GSA 28 servo install kit. Now we already have a mounting bracket, so we don't need the mounting bracket. We bought that from brands. The GMC 507 the autopilot controller, the connector kit for that. We're doing a remote com, so that's a thousand bucks. And then we're doing the GTX 45R transponder, which is ADSB in and out. And both of those are remote, so they'll be controlled through the GDU 460. We won't have any of those faces on the, the panel. Not sure what that is, GPS 20A. I think it was an oh, okay, yeah, 800, I was like, what's that, 840 bucks. Okay, and then the connector kit, and then the, no, that's the unit, the, the, the separate unit that we didn't know about that allows allows for the GPS. I don't think it's an antenna, maybe it is. It's a pod that goes on. Okay, and then the connector kit for that, the uh, GPS antenna, the G5, G5 battery backup, G5 install kit, GA26 remote antenna, ELT, Bose aircraft power install kit, the center console, and the Rands has a setup to where you can do the regular uh, headsets or the bows. So we're going to go ahead and install both connectors. That way, if we want one or the other, we'll have it already in. 60 amp circuit breaker, I was talking about that earlier. 
uh, the VPX vertical power system. We went with the sport system. I think the sport system allows for one alternator and there's less circuit breakers. Like It's redundancy is what the other one does. Anyway, we went with the sport. I can't remember what the pro. I know it has some redundant features and I think for two alternators. Anyway, we're going with the, the sport connector kit. And again, that VPX gets rid of all of your breakers. So you won't have to have any of those guys and it's uh, configurable through your computer. It does a lot of things like it controls the wig wags. I was talking to Sean up there, Civic Coast, and he said that he can set it up to where at a certain speed, the wig wags will come on. So that's one less rocker switch we had to have on the panel. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. He, he said that we didn't have enough room for all the breakers and he, or all the switches. He said he can get rid of one of those and that the uh, vertical power will turn the wigwags on at, say, 60 miles an hour. Well, so. you want your wigwags when you're out flying. I mean, of course, you'll want, I don't know what you want steady when you're landing or taking off or whatever, but your wigwag is just it's kind of like, I'm out here on the approach to the airport at a certain speed. You want people to see you. I mean, that's like having, you got strobes out here. Well, well, he could set it up at any mile an hour. He was just saying that's yeah. one less switch you have to have. They come on at a certain well, mile an hour. What I would want is, is say, it, uh, wouldn't you want it to go steady when you land? Yeah, the wigwag will start wigwagging at, at certain speed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm just trying, I'm trying so, to see so what speed it would be. Yeah, you set it up for 40 or 50 miles an hour. Well, that's, that's going to be when you're landing. When you're landing, you really want lights out there in front of you. The wigwags will go off when you're landing. You just have your landing lights. We'll have a landing light switch. We'll have a strobe light switch, a nav light switch, and landing light switch. Okay. The wigwags will come on at a speed. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What speed do you want them on? Probably 40. I mean, well, stall speed's 38. Yeah, you want landing lights. You have a switch for that. Or, well, where's the wigwags come in? They're in the landing lights. The landing lights are on. Yeah. And they start wigwagging. Yeah, but do you want wigwagging while you're landing? I don't know what I want. You're the damn pilot. Well, I'm kind of steady light. You want the wigwag. So if you set it for 30 miles an hour when you're landing, you're never going to go under 30 miles an hour when you're landing, right? Well, what I'm Stalls saying is, 38. if you're on the approach to port, you're not. You've got your landing lights on, but they're really not doing you any good. Wigwag is another way for another pilot to notice. You'll notice a flash. You won't okay. notice a steady light. Well, so you want it on at 60 miles an hour. You want it to go steady. I would think. I don't know. All right. If you're on the approach to the airport, probably not going to matter when it's wigwagging. But if you're on the approach to the airport, you want a good steady light on what you're landing on, I would think. I just know this from the railroad. So we can title this video, Argument Over Wigwags. Well. <laughs> I, I don't have a, I don't know. Well, just, uh, just think about it. If you're, if you're on the approach to the airport, you're not, that landing light don't mean shit. You can't see shit out there. You know, people say, why don't you turn on your light so you can see where you're going? You can't see, that light doesn't provide any light. What it provides is when you see these jets going across here, you'll see yeah. wigwag. That means that's a recognition light. That's just like strobes, it's redundant. You got strobes out there. Yeah, they're going to notice the strobes, but if they can't see the strobes, they're going to see that wigwag and they're going to know that that's you coming out. Okay, when you get ready to land at 60 miles an hour, that wigwag, you're gonna see a, a light on, light off, light on, light off. But when, when you go to land, you're gonna want a steady headlight on that runway at nighttime so you can see where the runway is. You don't want the light cutting off on you. Well, that's why you set the wigwag to come on at say 40 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour. And that way anything under that speed when you're landing, then it's yeah, solid you're gonna landing land light. At 60. You're not gonna land at 40. Okay, that's why he said 60. Okay. So it, it well, plane, it full a, flaps, the plane stalls out at 38 miles an hour. I know, but you don't want to stop. You want to come in and land at 60 miles an hour. Hell, I used to land at 90 miles an hour. Okay. Because I, I got tired of sitting there going, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? There's that well, right there. Whatever you think, you just said that it's set up to that VPX to where the, it does the can you, can Does he have to do it or can No, we can go in and do all that. Okay. It just eliminates a switch is what he was saying. That's fine. Because, like I said, when you're out there, that wigwag can be wigwagging all it wants to. The only way you'll see it is if you're in fog. If you're in fog, you're in deep shit in. Okay, so VBX connector kit, master relay, miscellaneous parts, additional parts required for the wiring harness parts. Would include wire and other shop supplies needed. This is an estimate that could change. It was like 450 bucks. And then the labor was 5,300 to do everything. That was CAD, cut, powder coat, laser engrave, install equipment into panel, wire interface, wire associated G3X remote units. I added in the, he's gonna do the stick grip and basically he's going to do everything except like the the landing lights I'll have he'll he'll have a Molex connector plug 
we'll have to put a, another a plug on our end to plug into that. He's going to wire up the stick grips. We'll do the same thing. We'll we'll put a Molex connector. We'll plug them in, and it eliminates that VPX. That vertical power eliminates the relays for the stick, so you can run two sticks and it all goes through the vertical power. So we had a relay before to where- That bus bar you're talking about? No, the bus, the, no, not the bus bar. I'm talking about the relay for the Ray Allen sticks. Okay. You run two sticks, you have to have a relay or a switch. So say that you're, you're flying in the pilot seat and I want to take control of the airplane, we'd have to either flip a switch for uh -huh. me to be able to trim out the airplane or it's set up through a relay. Well, we bought the relay because we were gonna do it that route. That way either one could operate. Well, the vertical power eliminates the relay. It does it all through the vertical power. It also eliminates the little indicator light. There's a indicator light that we got with the kit and it will show what position your flaps are in, or your, uh, on your flaps, your uh, trim tab. And it's just a little LED light that shows where you where you are in relation to your, your trim tab. And that's eliminated with the vertical power and it puts it onto the GDU 460 screen. So, this, so all that, and they also give you a wiring schematic. I mean, these guys have been awesome to work with. Uh, Randy up there, he's a sales guy. That's who you want to talk to if you yeah, you want to talk. Yeah, go this route. He's been great, and then Sean's the guy that actually does all the wiring and whatnot. But so all that together was twenty five thousand seven hundred forty one bucks, which was about what thirteen cents a piece. Well, it's talking about how much cheaper it was than we're other places that other place that I called, and they were 10 months out. Pacific Coast is like two months out from the time that they start your, no, yeah, from the time they start your panel to finish, I think he said two months. So yeah, 20, basically 26 grand to do all the wiring and five, five grand of that. Well, 26,000 for everything and about five grand of that was the waiver to cut out the panel, to powder coat the panel and do all the wiring. A lot of, not a lot, but some of the wiring we'll have to do ourselves because you can't get the connectors through the firewall or whatnot. We'll do some more videos of that later on what we run into, but I think we're gonna be way better off. Dad and I were talking about, you know, for 5,000 bucks and you gotta take, what's it gonna cost us to have the panel cut and powder coated, et cetera. But just say that was a thousand bucks. So for 4,000 bucks, we have somebody wire this thing up. What happened, these wires are 22 gauge, so they're tiny. If we were to accidentally pin out a wire and short one of these screens out, that those screens are four grand. So there goes all the, you know, the money that you saved right there on one little accident. You know, the, the wiring is gonna be the hardest part of the airplane. So if you can have somebody to help you with that, or you can you know farm that out, you're going to be way ahead in my book. Hopefully in the next month and a half, two months, we'll have this panel back and everything. There's a lot of back and forth with them because there's a lot of systems and a lot of wiring and a lot of things that you know you have to, to verify with them on where everything's placed, to what style rocker switches you want, to dimmers, to you know, all kinds of things. So we'll get back to you and let you know what we liked, what we didn't like. But so far, I'm really liking this uh, the Pacific Coast. They're up in Oregon and uh, you can Google those guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Dad and Chad. If you like this video, share it with your friends and give us a thumbs up. And never miss an episode of Dad and Chad by hitting that subscribe button. Because we'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Thanks again for watching Dad and Chad. <laughs>